Let's create this exterior in 3D Max and Corona Render. In this tutorial I will try to cut out main concepts to save your time, but keep it understandable for the beginners. So let's get started. First of all, you need to stop right units, I prefer centimeters. Next, really important thing when you model scene by photo is to match up the reference with the camera. 3D Max have really cool tool for this, perspective match, but for correct work you need image with the two points of perspective. I drag and drop reference image in viewport and choose only viewport background. Next, we need to match up the proportions, open render setup and change width and height accordingly with your reference image. Now we need to turn on save frame mode. For this, I press shift plus F keyboard shortcut, open utilities tab and select perspective match. Here just match blue lines with the verticals of your reference, green and reds need to be aligned with the perspective lines. On the view tab choose create standard camera from view, it's important cause perspective match works only with the free type of camera. Next you wanna lock camera on hierarchy tab, choose link info and lock move and rotate checkboxes. After it's done, I create plane with proportions of my plan and uh, drag and drop it to the plane. Second, you need to create box with real dimensions of some object, in my case it's door, and scale plan accordingly with it. The most important thing and hard for beginners to match up real proportions with the camera. I create box as rough mess of my house and match it with the reference in camera view. Then, to verify that everything set up correctly, I check height of my box and its look like real architectural height. Now it's time to move ground on zero coordinates by Z axis. For this, attach camera to the group, change pivot point to the bottom and move whole group on zero by Z axis. Congratulations, hard things done. And here modeling part begins. Always keep in mind what part of the scene visible in camera in, and give the most priority for it. Move from general to specific. For comfortable work you can freeze plants. With simple boxes and editable poly modifier I model main walls of the house. I use spline to make part of the roof and enable checkbox, enable in render, enable in viewport, then mesh the size of it. And also I change it to rectangle type. Repeat process with the next floor. Use symmetry modifier to make same parts. For the basement I also create spline and apply extrude modifier on it. Win 
windows was modeled by simple poly modeling and shell modifier. Make some rough details to add realistic look. Next, just copy it and apply editable poem modifier to match up with another windows. In some cases, on the corner you need to use symmetry modifier with gizmo rotated by 45 degrees. Don't forget to save the process you've done. Time to make ground. Add some polygons and use freeform tools to create some variations, some hills to make it look less CG and more realistic. Vegetation is really important part of exterior and you need to spend time on searching right models. I use Evermotion libraries for this. To save memory, use proxy exporter and change viewport display as solid box. Now time to create corona scatter. All settings was fine during tests, so just relax and try different numbers. For those who doesn't familiar with scatter, can check official corona tutorials. Also check advanced video about distance map. I duplicate basement and change height to use it as an object for the distance map. For the tree wall. I just create spline and another corona scatter with the line mod. Add rest of the details like curtains and car. Curtains can be easily done in Marvelous Designer. There are many tutorials on YouTube about it. You can change curtain size with FFD modifier to fill the whole window. Also I've add some trees as an instance in front of the house to make it look more interesting. Don't forget about chamfers, cause it really add realistic look to your objects. You can select specific edges in editable poly and with this selection add chamfer modifier to chamfer only these edges, means selected. Last detail here is wooden walls on balcony. I made it with floor generator Convert it to editable poly and use symmetry modifier to wrap the wall. Last, you can override whole scene with clay material and exclude glass objects. Now it's time for lighting and material setup. Keep in mind what is the main hero of this scene and give more time for it. And less time for the second priority things. I set up basic corona sunlight for the beginning, don't forget to click Add Corona Sky Environment. In the Corona Render Setup Settings tab, change Secondary Solver to Path Tracing. For exterior render, that's all setups Corona need. Now, scene overexposed, so I will easily change exposure in Corona Frame Buffer. And that's all light setup for now. Later, it will be changed. Let's create materials. I will make some screenshots of all main shaders, so you can easily recreate it. And now I will stop only on the key moments. Working in Slate Material Editor really more comfortable and easy to understand, so I strongly recommend you forget about Compact Material Editor if you want to learn shadering process. I always enable in viewport textures of material I'm working on, to understand the scale. And I don't like to use real world texture size, so I set up sizes manually in UVW map modifier. This modifier tells 3D Max how texture need to look, which size and proportions it need. Assign material to all objects that need it and copy UVW map modifier 
by drag and drop it from object to object. If you work with override material function enabled, don't forget add exclusion for the objects you're currently working on. Start interactive render and begin shendering process. Just add textures one by one and set up material parameters. Real-time feedback from interactive render really helps in shadowing process. So I just look on the reference and try to match my shader. In some cases, normal maps need flip green channel. So I just check how it looks with and without this checkbox. In some cases you can see that shadows falls incorrectly. So I just change flip green channel. To add some dirt leaks, I use Corona AO map. In this case, I have dirt in some wrong places. So I create a mask using gradient and composite map. In 3D Max it works like in Photoshop. Black height, white reveals. Keep it in mind and everything will be ok. Some diffuse textures need to be slightly different color, so I just add color correction node and change it. To add more variations on the ground I've added noise modifier and turbo smooth. Always when you're working with shaders keep in mind that every surface has imperfections and doesn't leave them clearly. Even small imperfections will add realism to your works. Really important, color balance your vegetation with each other. So I use color correction node and make them all pretty same green color with slight differences. That's all for the shadering and now time for the final light step. To add more atmosphere I will use Corona volume material. You can check tutorial on it on the official channel. Change sun position so light streaks goes straight into the camera and adjust the exposure and white balance. Now base light setup and time for artificial lighting. Position some light objects on the exterior perimeter. To make light shape more interesting I use IS files. For the settings just change color to more cold temperature and increase the power. For the interior light I use simple Corona Sphere light, change temperature to warm and uncheck visible in reflections and refractions. As you can see I use complementary scheme when mix warm and cold color in light setup. This trick is easy way to boost the interest of your image. For the final render settings I just change the noise limit to 5% so render stops at this value of noise. Turn on the denoiser and change the output size of image. I have also added some render elements for post productions, such as select light, here don't forget about denoise checkbox, z depth, reflections, refractions, wire color and ID for masks, and C texture map for some ambient occlusion effect. It need to have Corona AO map in texture slot. You can have two Corona AO maps, one with the small size and the second with the medium size. 
For the Z-Depth settings, just measure your scene from camera to the end with tape tool and type the size in max Z black slot. Check all render elements for the proper work and start the final render. Here are some tip you can reboot your computer and then start the render. In some cases it helps to clear cache and speed up the render time. I've got this render and want to add some sharpness before the post production. So decrease blur to the zero and pump sharp amount. You need to have pretty low contrast image to have ability change it in post production. So you doesn't need to have max white or max black colors. You need to keep it in the middle range of gray. Save as EXR file for more space to work with. Load in Photoshop, change to 16-bit mode and let's run camera raw filter. I will add screenshots of my settings. When you satisfy with camera raw result, time for adding render elements. It's easy to add them all using script load files into stack. Place it on the top of your image. Let's start with AO render element. For the blending mode I will use multiply and change the opacity. Also I add the mask to reveal this effect only in the center and boost some volume in foreground trees. For the light elements I use blending mode, screen and decrease the opacity. Also you can boost color using hue saturation adjustment layer with the clipping mask enabled. As you can see, all adjustments aimed to keep eye where you need it to be. In my case, it's center of composition. Render element with environment light I used to crank up difference in light and shadows on the wall with mask and gradient tool. Z-Depth I used to add some hazy or foggy look in the background. Just invert it and low the opacity. In the end just add some blur on the sides using Nick Filter Collection. Color Effects Pro. Here you choose Vignette Blur and change the shape. After that I also used a mask to set up properly where it needs to be. You can also add some lens flare effects or LUT to your taste. All the files like scene archive, render, plans and screenshots you can find in the link below the video. Thanks for watching, hope you like it and find useful. Please subscribe on my channel for more interesting tutorials. And I really appreciate if you write some comments below the video. 
Feel free to ask me a question. See you next time. Bye.